Hello, my dear friends. This is a painter cat. My name is Catherine. Let me demonstrate to you supplies uh, I recommend to use for my tutorials. This time uh, we will paint with you together with watercolor and it's gonna be a tropical landscape. So it's a sea, it's a sand, it's a beautiful sky and a palm trees. This is a demonstration tutorial, short one, where I wanna share to you most important moments and uh, main steps we need to do if we wanna create a landscape like this. Uh, if you like to paint with me in the real time, welcome on my Patreon. There you can find this tutorial, this landscape in the real time with comments about techniques, about color mixing, uh, what and where I use these or those brushes and what it's gear. So all in details you can find in the real one. Uh, where to start? Let's see. First, uh, let's create a sky. I put water on just on a half of sheet of paper. I didn't touch a uh, sea area yet and a sand. It's still dry. I used calligraphy brush just in case it's big enough, you know, and it's really fast to cover big areas, huge areas. I just like it. Uh, anyway, you can use any brush you have, small one uh, also will do. And next, let's think what colors are most bright and colorful for tropical sky. It's of course cobalt blue plus sun blue. It can be a tiny bit of violet, but be careful with it, because violet giving, you know, some shady, rainy effect if it's too much but sometimes a tiny bit giving a nice and a beautiful accent and um, also by the way i planning to create violet shadows um that will be on a sand and uh, together with some points of violet in the sky I think it will look nice. So yes, it can be a violet as well, but mostly it's a cobalt blue and a blue colors. Not just a one color gradient here, it's uh, also lots of clouds and I just left uh, empty paper there where I wanna see a clouds. And uh, let's plan some forest, tropical forest, dark one, wet one on the left side. This one will stay in the shadows, so later it's going to be darker and darker. You know, good contrast um, will give us more sunny effect, I believe. And the next, it's a C for C. I really recommend to you go for dry brush. Why it is so? Uh, I like to see a combination of uh, techniques with an opposite characters, with an opposite feeling from it. Very soft, velvety colors on wet on wet will look perfect if it have a dry brush close to it. Dry brushing most visible on a rough paper. So I recommend to use textured one because on a smooth paper uh, dry brush technique hardly um, can be created. So be careful with the material choice. Uh, it's important for this tutorial. And more about dry brush technique with watercolor you can find on my channel on a um, uh, landscape tutorial about beacon. See these tiny white dots of empty paper? That's what it's give. Without any latex, without any masking liquids or any tricks, we already able to create a foam. About a sand. 
Mm, be careful with the browns here mm, because tropical sand much warmer and much more colorful and instead of just a sepia and a brown I'd recommend to use maybe English red plus tiny bit of orange and yellow all together it will give a really shiny effect uh, for the foreground and if you wanna create thin and uh, transparent wave uh, then you have to repeat the same sand color on area of the bay. Emerald green. Isn't it a color we like to see on our photos uh, when we enjoying a tropical views? So let's add it for waves as well. We still have an empty um, paper there, so our uh, emerald green will sound very beautiful and clear there. But again, be careful with white stripes, it's a foam, and just leave it clear and without any watercolor. Personally, I like to use a latex uh, masking liquid and um, I like to combine watercolor plus gouache, white gouache later for detailing, but honestly, when I was a student, um, I'd say our teachers counted as a bad taste when we tried to bring latex or some other tricks or uh, gouache on top of the watercolor to mix it somehow all together. It's making a painting process with watercolor more simple, true. It's helping us to control uh, white areas we need. We can keep them clear, but I recommend if you're learning how to paint with watercolor, try to avoid latex and a white gouache. Nothing bad, nothing wrong if you will use it in the end to um, make some white parts white, maybe splatters, splashes more visible, but try to avoid it in the middle of the process. As in a perfect watercolor, I'd say it's just watercolor on a paper, true one, without any uh, additional ads and without any tricks. That means you can control watercolor well, you can plan your painting really smart and leave white as it's need to be in the end. But again, personally, I like to use it. It's very simple. If you want to use a latex uh, here for example masking liquid uh, yes you can do you can cover trunks for example trunks of the palm trees but look nothing uh, difficult to just uh, lift up some watercolor from your paper i just did it with my brush just a clear water and clear brush wash it a little bit and lift up some pigment, that's it. One of my favorite brushes for all times, it's a fork brush. Uh, it's my title for this brush, I'm not sure it's the right title on English and it's how I named it for a really long time already. It is the uh, brush with uh, double layers of a bristle. It's a synthetic one. First layer shorter and it's a thick and the second layer longer and it's more thin. When you wet a brush like this, it's starting to look as a fork. Why I love it so much? Take a look how easily to create palm leaf um, with the, this kind of brushes. I go the central vein and with just a normal watercolor brush then I'm switching to the fork one and I'm just creating brush stroke by brush stroke 
those lines. It can cross each other um, somehow, it can layer on top of each other. Uh, in one go, brush creating like uh, three or four leaves. If I would paint it with a brush number one or number zero, one by one, it will take an hours and hours create landscape like this. And still probably I will be not happy with the shape um, of the leaves. This brush will help you a lot. And by the way, not only for the leaves, uh, this shape is perfect. It's nice for grass, for example, for human hair giving a nice effect as well and for many many other users. Uh, I find it as a part of the set of 12 brushes and uh, I drop a link for you, you can find uh, supplies I used, uh, follow the link and there you will find on my page you will find a links for the store uh, where you can find these brushes and by the way if you visiting art stores uh, around you. Just, uh, you know, be curious about uh, brushes. There sometimes I saw this brush as a single. It's also possible to find. One by one we go and uh, personally I like combination of a mix of the subgreen and uh, cadmium orange. Um, not the whole leaf of a palm tree need to stay green, need to be green. Ends of the tiny leaves can be dry already because it's a sand, it's a wind and waves. Sometimes, not all the time, weather here so shiny. Sometimes it can be rainy, cloudy and uh, all like this. So, if you will create a dry ants, it will look very natural. So, sometimes with my foot brush, I'm starting with a subgreen, but sometimes I'm changing to the cadmium orange, mixing them together in a leaf. Uh, next, I want to create some trunk. It's really detailing. A part of the painting so welcome on my patreon for more detailed real-time tutorial and here I just wanna demonstrate to you we can control the shape not just a painting shape itself but by um, changing area around for example this trunk for palm uh, far from us I created a darker area around the trunk. That's how it's showing up. So that's how you can control um, objects on your landscape, on your paintings as well. As I told you from the start, this forest have to stay really dark and uh, wet, I'd say, visibly wet. I'm not uh, mixing there any dark brown or black. Instead of it, I'm just layering and layering sub green. This color itself looking very deep if it's pigmented enough. So for dark forest staying in a shadow, I can just put more green on top. That's it. I believe, I believe I'm done with uh, leaves and the next a technique we will talk about in a tutorial it's a glazing glazing it's a tricky technique with watercolor because sometimes um, you can easily lift up the previous layers uh, to prevent it first dry your painting well and only after go for glazing and second try not to rub paper with your brush with a glazing layer just go if you are trying to spread a jelly on top and that's it do not blend better it will lift a previous uh, colors next while uh, I still waiting for drying uh, of glazing layer I did some splatters different colors orange yellow 
uh, maybe some sepia as well can do and drying because later I'm planning to put a cast shadows on top. Let's create a shadows. I believe violet color here perfect because uh, if you will go for blue uh, we already have here look yellow and orange so with a blue on top color will turn to the green sometimes to prevent it again better go for violet together with orange and yellow it will look more clear and uh, i'd say more beautiful it will give more you know, warm feeling from this landscape uh shadows close to us they are contrasted they have a sharp edge so not to blend it and if shadow is going more far from you there you can uh, put colors more light and there you can blend a little bit to create a softer edges just a tiny bit and by the way don't forget about the shadow goes not only on a sand it's going on a vase as well just on top so spread your line of the shadow on top of the uh, waves on top of the sea you can see i'm using two brushes first with a color and second a dry and clear to control maybe lines to help me uh, spread color and important notice it's not just a flat line not just a flat and straight it's a curvy a little bit this way i can give a shape of the hill I can bring more of the sand look here because sand it's not an asphalt it's not a flat surface have some gaps you know on top it's so random so try to imitate this surface kind of random one uh, let's go a bit far color here turned to uh, more bluish and as I told you here we can go with more blended edges and again using two brushes first bringing a color and second blending color like this really soft looking right but don't blend it too much because uh, soft shadows more typical for cloud uh, weather and uh, let's see maybe one more line what do you think very very light violet color done I already created here a tiny houses far from us on a background like a bungalows. It's a typical detail for tropical islands. Mm, and I want to bring another detail that uh, letting us know it's uh, people who walking around here who enjoying they stay on a tropical island. It's a tiny footprints. Imagine yourself walking on a sand like this, walking from your bungalow, uh, enjoying landscape around, and the moment you turn back, you want to look uh, at bungalows behind you. This way you can see your own uh, footprints, isn't it, on a sand. So let's put it here. You can change any details on your own taste. You can not to create footprints here for example you can bring here uh maybe stones tiny flowers lianas it can be another colors for sand or the sky i really like to see on instagram when you changing compositions landscapes on your own taste and it's 
also giving me new ideas for our future tutorials. So change it, combine it with another landscapes from my channel. You can find a tutorial how to combine, how to combinate uh, landscapes with uh, sketches we already create. And by the way, this sketch, this traceable for a uh, tutorial you can find on my Patreon as well. Just print it, uh, transfer on a good quality paper, mm, tutorial about it uh, also on a channel already and you will be mm, ready to start paint with me. On top of the glazed leaves I bring in more uh, sharp details on top a little bit not everywhere I like to give some random touch here and there and again sub green it's a very deep green that means I can mm, put contrasted details on some leaves look how folk trees easily bringing this needle looking leaves on top. I just hope from the first use you will try it, you will fall in love with this shape uh, as I did. When I used it for first time I was so surprised, so actually amazed how simple can be creating those tiny elements and lines with this brush. Sometimes watercolor in the middle of the process looking as a mess. Especially if you're combining a different techniques, wet and wet and dry brush all together. Just do not stop in the middle. Try to complete all your paintings. In the end, most of the time it's turning really interesting and beautiful. So I recommend to complete painting no matter what, even if in the middle you have some doubts. You have my mail, my Patreon. Guys, if you still have any questions, don't be shy to ask me here and of course welcome on Patreon. I will be happy to see your own paintings. You can share it to me through Instagram as well, hashtag PaintyCat. Thank you for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Subscribe my channel. We will have more interesting ideas for painting in the future. And I'll be happy to see some likes uh, under my video as well. That's mean you like to paint with me. I removed tape with a hair dryer and my painting done. It was a painty cat. I wish you all the best, my friends. I catch you later. Bye-bye.